Kim, what's on your radar? Where is Peng Shui began trending once again on social media after French magazine Le Quip published a recent interview with a disappeared tennis star. It sort of sounds crazy to say it out loud, but yes, a French magazine interviewed a woman believed by many to have been disappeared by the Chinese government. They sat down with her in person, took photos, and talked with her. She clearly hasn't disappeared into some labor or re-education camp or worse, into a grave. She's clearly sitting for the magazine conducting an interview, so it's sort of odd and kind of comical to hear people continue to ask, where is Peng Shui? Well, she's right here. Okay, but rightfully, people then began to suspect that perhaps Peng Shui is being controlled by the Chinese government and is being forced to say something she doesn't mean. Sure, we can see her, we can see that she hasn't disappeared after all and that she's alive and well, but is she mentally well? Is she emotionally well? Is she really free or is she being controlled? Now let's back up to how all of this began and let's get to the truth as best as we can. So Peng Shui is a Chinese Olympian and professional tennis player. She won gold medals and has taken home trophies from Wimbledon and the French Open. This past November, Peng Shui published a post on Weibo that is known as, it's a Chinese Twitter, basically. The post was in Chinese and was extremely scandalous. The post discussed a sexual affair with a 40 years her senior married and now retired Chinese Communist Party government official. Now, there are some disputes regarding the translation of the post, and we'll get to those, but there are a few aspects to the post that are commonly agreed upon. First, this post was written in distress after her affair broke down with the official. It sounds like the man and Zheng Goli started to ignore Peng Shui, and in response, she posted about their affair to Weibo. Now, according to the Post, the affair first began 10 years ago, lasted a little while, then stopped for a few years, then started back up again about three years ago. Peng says she loved him, and she was with him willingly. According to Peng, Zheng Goli says he loved her back but he couldn't divorce his wife, of course. So that's what's agreed upon. Now, what isn't agreed upon are some other details from the post. According to the most commonly circulated translation here in the West, Peng Shui talks about how the affair started back up the second time around. The translated post says Peng Shui was invited to Zhang's home to play tennis with him and his wife, where she was then subsequently forced to have sex with him. Someone stood guard at the door. Peng Shui says she cried the whole time, and she has no proof of the encounter or of their affair. This is the translation that shocked the Western world. Within 30 minutes, the post was removed from Weibo. Peng Shui deleted all of her social media accounts, and then the tennis star disappeared. Now, this caused not only fans on social media, but governments and human rights organizations to begin, to begin inquiring of Peng's whereabouts. U.S. officials began calling for a boycott of the Beijing Olympics over human rights abuses, which include disappearing dissenters. People wore shirts with the hashtag, where is Peng Shui? Chinese officials were questioned during press conferences about Peng's whereabouts. The Women's Tennis Association called on Chinese authorities to ensure Peng was safe and under no physical threat. The ATP chairman issued a statement of concern, as did Novak Djokovic, Naomi Osaka, Serena Williams, Federer, and Nadal. Amnesty International called on China to prove Peng was safe. So did the European Union. It was a frenzy. Meanwhile, users of Chinese social media claimed they had spotted Peng Shui in photos on her friend's social media accounts that she was alive and well. An email was released allegedly from Peng Shui stating that she was fine just resting at home and claimed the sexual assault allegations were false and not what she meant. People nonetheless believed the photo of Peng Shui were fake or photoshopped, that the appearance of Peng herself was a maybe a doppelganger, and that the statement, if really if it really came from her, was coerced. As the saga unfolded, many native Chinese speakers came out saying the post, though a showcasing of an abuse of power of an older prominent man, did not accuse Zhang of sexual assault. The Chinese word has many meanings, and one must look at the context to fully understand it. What Western media outlets translated to mean force could also be translated to mean pressured or coerced. Essentially, they translated it as her saying she was not the one pursuing the affair, that it was his doing. Her claiming to have no evidence seemed to be in context of the entire affair and his denial of it. The person guarding the door was so his wife wouldn't catch them. The Post, to many native Chinese speakers, says Peng tells a sad story of being a mistress in love who was taken advantage of and ultimately discarded. She believed Zhang would take responsibility, which means to Chinese speakers owning up to the affair once it was suspected. So which translation are we supposed to believe? Well, the accusations of assault never take into consideration the entirety of the post. Peng clearly says that after the night in question, 
her love for Zhang rekindled, and so did their affair. She has also subsequently come out saying it was an all a misunderstanding and that she was never assaulted. So do we take her word for it? Now, Peng claims the relationship had nothing to do with power or money, but many people feel the relationship was an inappropriate abuse of power, like what we've seen exposed many times over in the Me Too era. Could Peng be lying to save face either for her, for him, or more importantly, the Communist Party of China? Yes, it's possible. But again, if you read the entire post from top to bottom, it does sound more like an upset scorned mistress than a woman assaulted. Was she coerced into not talking more about her affair? Quite possibly. Shame in Asian countries is a real thing. And a post like this not only brings about a reputation crisis for Peng and Zhang, but also for their families, friends, and the Chinese government. A post made like this in haste and with extreme emotion could lead to a person being shunned for life from their family and community. And we're actually familiar with this. It's not just unique to Asia. Mistresses are often looked down upon and scorned here in America as well. Now, one thing is for certain, Peng hasn't been disappeared. She's very visible. So we can stop with the where is Peng Shui hashtags and t-shirts. This seems like another futile attempt to paint China as a monstrous country who we should consider waging war against. It's the same old, same old blame, bully, and bomb strategy that the U.S. has been deploying for decades against rising world powers. Our problem with China is economic, and we need to keep focused on that. If we're going to compete with them and have a chance, I can't keep saying that enough. The world is growing weary and tired of our typical feather ruffling tactics. That's not to say China doesn't commit human rights abuses. They do. We do. But on that point, I sure wish the media, government, and humanitarian organizations would take this much notice when someone here in our own country claims they've been abused or assaulted by a powerful politician and are subsequently canceled or shamed into hiding. We do a lot of covering up ourselves. So just want to reiterate, in reading the entirety, I, I had to dig up the entire post. It was in Chinese, so you do have to rely on translations, but you can get a few different translations of the post. But the biggest thing that points out whether or not you think that there was this night in question that happened three years ago that was a lot of that was uh, a sexual assault. It, 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 then it's like, how do you then go to from that to her saying that night my love was rekindled and we began our affair again for three more years? That part doesn't add up, so I tend to believe the translations that it was not a sexual assault, but instead she felt like he talked her back into the affair, he coerced her back into the affair, and she didn't want to do it. And she was like, oh, I don't want to go back into that world of being a mistress. And then she did. So I don't know. It's just, a, yeah. I, I think, another attempt to make China look monstrous, which, you know, again, they are a competitor. We should be keeping our eye on them, but I don't know if we need to be doing it through the same old, same old uh, bully bombs and... Uh, you know, that, that well, sort of tactic. The whole thing would be an argument for, you know, against censorship. It would be an argument for leaving the posts up, you know, a, you know, a, a culture of allowing her to speak freely, you know, rather than everything, you know, instantly nuked. And then she does, you know, publicly disappear for a, for a long time. You know, if, if, say, like Ashley Judd accused Harvey Weinstein of, uh, of assaulting her, and then Ashley Judd disappears for two weeks, or three yeah. weeks, like I mean, people in I, America would be like, where is Ashley Judd? Right, like, but what I took from that was she was a, clearly from the post very upset. So she wanted some like, look, if I were that upset because I just went through a breakup, I would, I would, you know, kind of not right. be These seen are, in public yeah. either, right? Like you're sad. Yeah, no, look, I agree with you. I, I mean, I have pushed back sometimes on, on what I have considered to be certain excesses of the kind of Me Too uh, uh, crusade because, you know, obviously there was a lot of bad, uh, horrific treatment by, you know, monstrous human beings, but, you know, also some bad dates, some things like that, that, that got recontextualized later, et cetera. You know, we see a lot of that with like the college campus sexual misconduct um, uh, controversies. So I totally hear you on all that. And yes, we should. Uh, throw we, I don't in the want, language barrier and uh, throw in the right, language barrier. I don't want to bomb China. Right. No war with China, but the Chinese government is extremely bad and utterly distrustworthy. Not, far e even beyond our own government's the inability to trust it. They, you know, they their their distrust is 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 so pervasive. So I it's a it's a situation where we can't know what the truth is because they have absolutely no credibility on this. Well, I mean, you can still see the post. I mean, it, people right. took screenshots and stuff. Well, right. I but mean, we know, yes, we, it was taken down. But like down. we don't know if she's pressured. Yeah. Is it was it just a bad break? That we have no way to know because we can't trust her. Uh, all right. Well, we got to go. Thank you, Kim. And we have more rising coming up. 
stick around.